Welcome to Shepherd of the Valley's online worship service. I'm Pastor Jeremy Belter, and I have the privilege of serving at our Candelas campus. We're so thankful that you found us today and that you will worship with us. And I pray that the word of God you hear is enlivening and lifts you up in your faith. Just a couple of housekeeping items uh, for those of you that are first timers uh, joining us on our online worship. Uh, in the description below the video here, you will find a link to our worship folder if you would like to have that up with you while we go through the service. Otherwise, all the, the songs and the responses will be on the screen for you to participate with as well. In that description, you'll also find a digital connection card. If you're in the Arvada area, we'd love to hear from you. And if there's any way our congregation can be of service to you, please fill it out and, and get in contact with us. And finally, if you are a member of our congregation and you want to participate in online giving, you'll find the link for that as well. We're getting near the end of the Easter season, and for the last several weeks we've had a series entitled, What, what Happens When Our Plans Fall Through? You know, maybe you're like me. It's kind of hard to remember what day it is. Sitting on my couch last night, and it was Friday night, and I'm like, oh, it's Friday night. But every day kind of seems the same, doesn't it? Have you forgotten how to live life? When you go back to normal, whatever that is, will you, for, will you remember how to live your life? What we'll see today in John chapter 14 is that no matter if we're inside a pandemic or outside of a pandemic, no matter what life looks like, Jesus shares with us how to live our life. We're going to see that love works. So let's begin our worship service. We're going to begin with two verses of the song, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. May God bless your time with him and with his word. Jesus is life, and through him you have life too. Give glory to God because your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. We'll continue with the song of praise.
Let's join prayer. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our risen and living Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue with a Bible story for the kids. So children, if you want to get a little closer to the screen, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to tell you the story today about a little boy named Samuel. Samuel was a little boy that lived thousands of years ago, but he's a very special boy. You see, his mother, Hannah, at one time, she couldn't have any children, so she prayed to God to have a son. And you know what God did? He answered her prayer with a yes and gave her this son named Samuel. Now, Hannah had also promised that if the Lord gave her a son, that he would serve the Lord as a, as a worker in the temple for his entire life. And so that's exactly what Samuel did. Samuel went to live at the temple with a man named Eli, who was the high priest. One night, however, something interesting, something special happened to Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in his, in his bed, and all of a sudden he heard a voice call his name. Samuel! Samuel! And so he thought it was Eli, the priest, asking him for some help. So he ran to Eli. But Eli said, oh, it's not me. It happened again a second, a third time. The voice called for Samuel, and Samuel ran to Eli. But each time, it wasn't Eli. Finally, Eli figured it out. It was God talking to Samuel. And so he said to Samuel, the next time the voice speaks to you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so the next time the Lord called out to Samuel, 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 he said, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. And from that point on, Samuel would be what we would call a prophet, a man who would go and share the word of God with other people. Do you hear God talking to you? I haven't heard God talk to me. Maybe you haven't either. But that doesn't mean that God isn't talking to us. God still talks to us today. He just does it in a different way and an even more powerful way. He does it in this book that we call the Bible. It's in the Bible that God speaks to us. He tells us when we've done things that are wrong, and he tells us that Jesus is our Savior. So in your life, always take time to read the Bible because that's where God comes to you and talks to you and tells you of his wonderful love. All right, let's fold our hands and we'll say a prayer. Repeat after me what I say. Heavenly Father, help me to always listen to your voice through the words of the Bible. Amen. Thanks for paying attention. We're going to continue with two, with a, two scripture lessons. The first scripture lesson comes from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4. We see two individuals in this section. We see a man named Cain and a man named Abel. They were brothers. One believed in the Lord, the other did not. And we see that life, we see that love of the Lord reflected through Abel, but we see the lack of love and faith in the Lord reflected through Cain. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. The man, that is Adam, was intimate with Eve, his wife. She conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have gotten a man with the Lord. She also gave birth to Cain's brother Abel. Abel tended sheep, but Cain worked the ground. As time passed, one day Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil. Abel also brought some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord looked favorably on Abel and his offering, but he did not look favorably on Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his face showed it. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why do you have that angry look on your face? If you do good, will you not be lifted up? If you do not do, if you do, not do good, sin is crouching at the door, and has a strong desire for you, but you must rule over it. Cain said to Abel, his brother, Let's go into the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked Abel, his brother, and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? 
He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the soil. Now you are cursed and sent away from the soil which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the soil, it will no longer give its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great for me to bear. Look, today you have driven me away from the soil. I will be hidden from your face, and I will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. The Lord said to him, No, if anyone kills Cain, he will face sevenfold revenge. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain, so that anyone who found him would not strike him down. Then Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is God's word. We'll continue with the song of praise. Please note you're welcome and uh, invited to sing on the refrain, and then I will sing the verses in response. I need 
Hello, everyone, and it, it, it's so wonderful to be able to share God's Word with you um, as we continue in the Safer at Home orders now. The Apostle Paul once said, when he was chained, the gospel is never chained. And that's so true. The gospel will get out, and what a wonderful blessing it is to be able to share the Word together. For me to share it to you, to encourage and strengthen you in your walk of faith, in your walk in life, through this wonderful medium of technology. And I pray that it has been a blessing and continues to be a blessing for you. The word of God that we're going to focus on today comes from John chapter 14, words that Jesus spoke the night before he died. I want to begin with a story. There was a, an old man who was recently widowed. He and his wife had accumulated a lot of wealth throughout the course of their life. Unfortunately, though, they didn't have any children, and so they didn't have anybody to share the money with. After his wife passed away, he looked for opportunities to share the wealth that he had received in life to help out those who needed it. One night, he sat on his, recli on his recliner and watched a, a news report about a young man, a young boy, who had been born blind. As the reporter interviewed the, the mother, she shared all the challenges and the struggles that this little boy had to live his life and how he had to learn so many things that you and I would take for granted having eyesight. But the real reason for the story is the fact that recently there was an experimental surgery that had been developed, and this little boy was a candidate for that surgery. Doctors thought that if he had the surgery, that the little boy's sight would be restored. Sadly, though, the surgery was very expensive. Insurance wasn't going to cover it, and this family would never be able to afford it out of pocket. As the old man listened to the report, tears began to fill up in his eyes, and he saw an opportunity to help. And so immediately he called up the news station and got in touch with the, the producer of, the, of that report, and the producer put him in touch with the boy's family. As luck would have it, or coincidence, or providence, whichever, the boy actually lived in the old man's neighborhood. He lived just a few blocks over, had never seen him before, but what a wonderful coincidence. The old man went to this boy's house and sat in the living room with the family and shared with them the news. He wanted to pay for the surgery. Whatever the treatments were after that, whatever recovery was needed, anything that was necessary for this little boy to have his sight restored, he would pay for it. The, the mom and the dad were overwhelmed with joy. Tears streamed down their face. The little boy found his way over to the old man and enveloped him in a huge hug. Several months later, the surgery took place. And guess what? The surgery worked. The little boy's sight was restored, and over the next several weeks and months, he learned how to navigate in life now, learned how to do all the things that, that little boys are accustomed to doing. He learned how to ride a bike. He learned how to run. He even tried out for baseball. It didn't work out very well, but at least he tried. One thing he didn't forget about, though, was the old man. That old man that had given the, given the money for him to have his surgery, he would, he would send him cards periodically. He, he would ride his bike over to the old man's house because the man loved to sit on his porch and rock away in his rocking chair. And he would give him a hug and he would chat with him and say thank you. But then over time, the cards started becoming less and less frequent and the visits were fewer and far between. And then all of a sudden, one day, the little boy was, was on a bike ride with his, with his friends, and they rode down the street where this old man lived. As they, they went past the house, they got near it. The old man was there, and he was rocking in his rocking chair. And he, he lifted his hand and, and waved at the little boy. And the little boy started to raise his hand to, to wave back. And then all of a sudden, behind him, he heard one of his buddies say, Hey, that's old man so-and-so! Another one said, yeah, what a crazy old man. And all of a sudden, the insults started flying at this old man. And the little boy heard him. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, his hand went down, and he started laughing. He started laughing along with those boys and laughed at the insults they were throwing at the old man. As you listen to that story, what kind of emotions went through your heart and mind? Maybe at the beginning it's, it's sadness that this little boy was born blind. Maybe it was 
joy or exuberance at the, the surgery, at the, at the generosity of the old man to provide for that boy's surgery. Maybe it's anger, frustration at the end when the little boy stops thanking and appreciating the old man and instead starts resenting him, making fun of him. Whatever your, whatever your emotions were about that story, would it shock you and surprise you to know that's often the way we treat God? It wasn't, what, six weeks ago when we were celebrating Easter. Granted, it was a much different celebration than we're used to. But the truth of Easter is still the same. Jesus still rose from the dead, and over the last several weeks, we have heard how hope is restored, fear is removed, joy is removed, renewed. Our faith has been strengthened. Death has been defeated. Our sins are forgiven. When you think about all that Jesus did for you, over the last several weeks, has your joy and exuberance grown? Has it kind of stayed the same? Or has it started to wane? It happens frequently in our life, doesn't it? That, that our joy and our thankfulness towards our God of salvation begins to wane and, and decrease. What Jesus means to do today in John chapter 14 is inspire the joy again in our hearts. To remind us of who he is and what he's done. For the purpose of saying thank you with our lives. For the purpose of taking the love that he has shown to us and extending it out into the world. Jesus, in effect, is going to just teach us how to live life again. That no matter what is going on, we always have love to show. Jesus is going to share with us today that, that love works. Love works, first of all, to save. And then love works also to serve. So remember the context of the words we're about to read in John 14. Jesus is in the upper room with his 11 disciples. They're about to leave the upper room. They've just finished the Passover. Jesus is teaching them, and the next day he's about to die. And in verse 15, in verse 21, he has a very direct statement for them. Let's take a look at those verses. John chapter 14, verse 15 and 21. Jesus said, If you love me, hold on to my commands. The one who has my commands and holds on to them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and show myself to him. This is God's word. So do you love Jesus? Of course you do. Why else would you be watching this, this um, worship service right now? You, you love Jesus, and so you listen to his word, you, you, you watch worship services, but, but why? Why do you love Jesus so much? It's because of everything he did. Greater than the gift, that, the sacrificial gift that that old man made for that little boy is the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Just after these words in John 14, he's going to leave that upper room. He's going to go right into the Garden of Gethsemane. And you know what happens there? He's betrayed. Betrayed by one of his disciples to his enemies. His enemies arrest him. They put him on trial. They beat him. They, they spit at him. They laugh at him. Then they hand him over to the Romans, and the Romans put him on trial. They flog him. They condemn him to death. And then Jesus is crucified for you. He does all that for you. He, the, the reason the Son of God came to this world was to rescue and save you, not from blindness, but from spiritual blindness, to rescue you from hell forever. And through that Savior, Jesus Christ, you are now forgiven. His death removes the guilt of your sins. You are completely and fully forgiven by God. And the stamp of approval that that is real and true is Jesus' resurrection. The, the one who lived on this earth for you, the one who lived life perfectly for you, is the one who rose from the dead for you. All of it, dear friends, his entire life, everything he did on this world, in this world was for you, so that you would be forgiven, so that your eternal life would be restored, so that you would have a spot with him in heaven. That's what he says. Take a look at verses 18 or 19 and 20. He said to his disciples, in a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
Jesus was, was going away to suffer, to die, and then to rise again. And in just a little while, three days, his disciples would see him again. They would see him alive, triumphant. The one who had promised that he would lay down his life and take it up again would appear to his disciples. He lives, so they would live. And because he lives, you live. You are alive through Jesus Christ. And it's as if that weren't enough. Jesus keeps on doling out the gifts. Jesus keeps on giving wonderful blessings to you and me because that's exactly how much he loves us. Take a look again at some of the verses from John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. You know him because he stays with you and will be in you. Jesus loves you, and you can see that in the way he works. His love goes to work, not only to, to save you through his death and resurrection, but to save you through the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus ascended into heaven, but he, he sent someone just like himself, the Counselor, God the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit has worked his way into your heart. You are now one with God. Perhaps it was when you heard the word for the first time. Perhaps it's when you were brought to the, the waters of holy baptism. And there, through the promise of the gospel, the Holy Spirit wormed his way, worked his way into your heart and gave you saving faith. Faith that looks to Jesus. Faith that, that trusts in Jesus no matter what. Faith that, that longs to be with Jesus. Faith that longs to see Jesus. Faith that loves to serve Jesus. Dear friends, your Savior Jesus loves you so much. And you can see that in what he did for you. Love works. It works to save. But it also works to serve. That's really the essence of love, isn't it? Love is an activity. It's an action. It, it's not really something you can quantify. It's not something you can measure. You can put in a jar and say, this is how much I love you. No, love is seen in action. Let me give you an example. You like musicals? You can admit it if you don't. I'm a musical nut. I love musicals. I've, I've been in them in high school and college, participated in them, and I love watching them. One of my favorite musicals of all time is Fiddler on the Roof. It's a story of a, a Jewish community in, in Russia at the time of the Russian Revolution. And things are changing in this community. All the old traditions are being replaced by new ones. And one of the traditions that's being replaced is arranged marriages. The, the, the main character in the musical is a man named Tevye. And when he got married, his marriage to his wife was arranged. And so he naturally went to the matchmaker and started arranging marriages for his daughters. But his daughters didn't respond to that. Instead, they started doing this thing called falling in love. They, they met different men that their father wanted them to marry, and they started falling in love with them. And one after another, the dominoes started falling, and these daughters got married to men that weren't arranged marriages by their father. After this has happened several times, the main character, Tevya, walks into his house one day, and he asks his wife a question. He's never really asked her before. Do you love me? And they sing this really cute song back and forth. And the essence of her response to him is all the things that she had done. She had given him kids, raised kids, milked cows, taken care of the house. As she goes through this list of things she has done for him, they both conclude at the end, they love each other. Not because they had said it so many times, but because they had shown it. That, dear friends, is the essence of love. That is exactly what Jesus says in verse 21. Take a look again at the, this last verse of the section. Verse 21. The one who has my commands and holds on to them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and show myself to him. This is God's word. Do you love Jesus? Well, it will be evident. It will be evident in how you live your life. It will be evident with what you do with Jesus' commands. 
So when you think about your life, is it evident that you love Jesus? Does it show in what you say and what you do? Or are you like that little boy in the story? Who at first was very exuberant and excited about what the old man had done, but by the end of the story was actually making fun of him. I think we have to confess that there are way too many times we're like the end of the story. The ways we, we don't hold on to Jesus' commands, the way we do the opposite of what Jesus says. When we do that, we're showing disdain and a lack of thankfulness and appreciation for the salvation he has given to us. We're making it look like we don't love Jesus. And yet, in spite of that, Jesus loves you. Think about that. Jesus came and died for our lack of love, for our lack of appreciation, because his love works continually to save us, dear friends. Even still today, his love is working in our hearts to continually forgive us and draw us back to himself. You are loved, dear friends, by Jesus. And so it's time to show your love. No matter what is happening in life, you always have opportunities to love. Because that's what love does. Love works. Love wants to show itself. And your love for Jesus wants to show itself. And so how does that happen? Well, here we are in the midst of a pandemic. Maybe you're one of those frontline workers. You're an EMT or a, a paramedic. You're a nurse or a tech or a doctor, police officer, firefighter. You interact with people that may have a virus. Love for Jesus sees Jesus as the example. The example of the one who saw people who were hurt, people who had disease, people who could not help themselves, and filled with compassion, Jesus went to work to heal their illnesses. You have the opportunity right now to mimic and model the example your Savior has set in the world. You get to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world. You get to show your love for Jesus, for the one who has died for you by giving of yourself to others. Maybe it's in, within, within your marriage. Maybe you are thinking of that spouse that, that God has given you. Every single day you have the opportunity to actively say to your spouse, I choose you and to show it. To show it in the way you treat your spouse, that Christ-like love, sacrificial love, a love that submits to one another, a love that does what is best for your spouse, a love that puts your spouse first and yourself after that. If you love Jesus, hold on to his commands and what he says about marriage. Maybe God has blessed you with life and yourself and you just have time now. You have lots of time and it's just you. Take a look around. Look around and see the talents that you have possessed, the talents that God has given you, the compassion that, that fills your heart, the, the passions that you have, and see around you all the opportunities that God places in front of you to be able to serve. Maybe because you have a lot of time, you just have a lot of opportunity now to show all the immense love that you have for Jesus in the variety of ways of service. Maybe you're stuck at home right now. You're thinking, what possibly could I do right now? Because you're part of that segment of the, uh, you're part of that demographic that's, that needs to stay home. Pray. Pray for others. When, when Jesus had time away and Jesus wanted to get away from the crowds, you know what he would spend his time doing? He spent his time praying. Praying for himself, praying for his disciples, praying for you. Dear friends, you have the time to pray. Pray for those who are serving in your place. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray without ceasing. You know, the list could go on and on, dear friends. But that's wonderful. That's, that's, the, that's the gift that God gives us. Love works. And in front of us, God puts out endless opportunities, dear friend, for that love to work through service. And so I pray that God fills your heart again and again and again with an overflowing amount of his love to such an extent, dear friends, that you serve, that you share. You love Jesus? I know you do. Then let's show it. Let's show it in our words. Let's show it in our actions to those around us. Amen.
At this time, we will make confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We'll speak those together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. O Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray that you would strengthen our faith, make our hearts bold, we may, that we may not fear but address our prayers to you in all humility. And so we ask that you would hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf. We pray for the agencies and institutions through which we show love for our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment. Enable us to aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Lord God, lead us to love, lead us to a love of godly things, that we may delight in the word and walk in your ways, and for the spirit, that we may be led into all truth and kept from error. Inspire us to serve and show our love to you in the way we love others. Lead us to pray, sacrifice, give, share, whatever is needed for those around us, that many may feel the warmth of your embrace and rejoice in your goodness. Hear us for the sake of Jesus, through whom we now pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this online worship service. We're thankful that you found us. If you're a member of Shepherd of the Valley and attend our Candelas campus, I recently, just a couple days ago, sent out a survey that talks about precautions that we want to make sure we're taking before we reopen for in-person worship. So check your email for that survey and please take it. As we get near the end of the month of May, perhaps into June or July, we'll be able to gather for in-person worship. And so we want to make sure that we're protecting you and your family and giving you peace of mind um, that we're taking health and safety seriously. So please fill that out. Thank you very much for joining us, and may God richly bless your week.